that in a second. So again, another incredible transition to Will Tober <laughs> and his good friend Brad Comey here on the radio show. Guys, thank you for coming on Conrad's Corner. Thank you for having thank us. You. I feel like a regular. <clears throat> Yeah, well, no, this could be a regular thing if this thing goes well. So, guys, tell me, oh, first off, let's introduce you. Will Tober, well, I don't know if we need to do this, but you're junior broadcast journalism. Right. Junior broadcast journalism, yeah. And then Bryce, did I uh, pronounce your name correctly? Yeah. Comey. Com Bryce Comey, actually. Oh, Comey. Well, yeah. no, that's incorrectly. It's, it's be all right. good. It's all good. Accuracy, number one priority here on Conrad's Corner. You'll soon find that out. So, basically, you are a junior, and you are double majoring in business and music? Exactly, yep. Nice, nice. Good combination. I said that yesterday, but anyway, I'll say it again. So, guys... Tell me about this documentary. Why is it called The Dropbox? Uh, well, I can talk about that a little bit. Um, so the reason it's called The Dropbox is because this man in South Korea, his name is Pastor Lee, um, has taken in over the course of 10 or 15 years um, 21 orphan children. Um, some of them are older now, but uh, they all have mental or physical dis disabilities or deformities. And um, the way the culture is in South Korea right now is such that um, many of these children are outcast or um, just kind of looked down upon in that culture. And so what parents will do is they'll often abandon these children. Um, and so what Pastor Lee did was he installed a drop box in the side of his home um, to allow parents to leave their children with him so he could care for them and love for them. Um, and so over the course of 15 years, like I said, he's had 21 of these children. Um, but the problem is right now is that the government is attempting to shut him down. Um, he's operating on a 40,000, what's the equivalent of a $40,000 budget here, Right. Um, taking care of 21 children in his own home. So he, the government is arguing that he doesn't have the facilities to take care of these children and that he's in enabling abandonment. Right. Um, and so our goal would be to go film the Dropbox, um, tell his story, come home, uh, start a foundation for him um, and raise money so that he can have um, a new home or another home to take care of these children, as well as um, hopefully um, branch out into uh, other stories like these because um, this really isn't an isolated incident. This is something that's happening all over Asia and around the world. Well, with any luck, uh, w one of the things that... One of the things that I'm so happy about that you guys were able to come on in here is because I was talking to both of you last night regarding the uh, the Daily Trojan article, which, uh, with any luck, I was about to say, might end up on the front page one of these days this week. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it took me Fingers quite a long time to come up with it because both of you guys, you're not just, you ramble on, not going to lie, but, <laughs> but it's very interesting because when you're really passionate about an issue like this, it's very interesting to sort of hear fellow students sort of get their words right, you don't garble anything, you don't mumble anything, and at the end of the day, you can just sense the passion in it. You can just talk about it. If we were to talk about, uh, you know, a broadcast journalism beach cleanup project, I think it would last us about, you know, a minute and a half. Right. But this, I mean, you can sit down for, for lunchtime or something like that and really belt it out. And my question is, so at the end of the day, why are you two involved in this? Why are you taking, because you told me last night that it's 8 to 12 hours right now of out-of-class time, which is a significant commitment. That's about to double, and we'll get to your fundraising goals in a second. But why are you making the sacrifice to help out folks who are what, like two, three, four thousand 4,000 miles away? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think for us, it's... Uh, like you said, it, it's time consuming, but I think um, the way I look at it is, is I was I was fortunate enough to be um, asked to join this team, um, and I think I ch I chose to continue to to help out in whatever way I can because I, I just heard this story for the first time, was really moved by it. I think Pastor Lee is a modern day hero in a society that you know doesn't necessarily uh, admire the things he's doing with these children, and and I think. Um, his story really is able to portray something that we don't necessarily see in our society or every day in our relationships with people. Um, and for me, it was just a, it was a huge inspiration. And um, I don't know, obviously, I think that these kids, these kids do need love. And it's, it's so sad that they're not necessarily able, most kids like them are not necessarily able to receive that love. And so for me, I just think that this is, kind of just a spark of hope that um, we need to hear, you know, we need to hear these types of stories um, in our lives. So, 
yeah, I don't know. That just got me really excited hearing the story initially. So yeah, it got me excited too, to the point where I'm actually planning on coming up on uh, Wednesday. You guys have a meeting for interested students, correct? That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. Wednesday in uh, SGM one twenty three 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 and uh, at ten p.m. It's a late night meeting, but it should work. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so just to get the facts correct, you two are part of a, a bigger deal here. This is all students, except not all USC students, but there's like four USC students. You got someone from UCLA. I'll forgive you for that. And you've got uh, actually two high schoolers, but mm-hmm. you're all around sort of like the same age group, I suppose. Right. Yeah. yeah. From like 17 to, you know, 24. Right. But what, one of the things, I don't know if it was Bryce or, or Will or maybe even Brian last night who said this. Brian is in charge of the entire production company. He's right. a student. He's a junior, and it's right. called Flashbulb Entertainment, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, and this is the first big thing he's belting out, the first documentary that he's ever done, mm-hmm. at least. Uh, that's what he told me last night. But one of the things he said is that, uh, you know, right here we have different majors here in the room and different ages and mm-hmm. things like that, different parts of the state at least. Mm-hmm. But uh, one of the keys is to sort of combine the individual talents into one concert uh, concentrated team effort to actually make this most effective documentary possible right. how are you guys going about that and overcoming the diversity i think the diversity helps i think um it gives us different perspectives and obviously we have all have different skills coming into this project that um you know make us a valuable member but like i told you last night i think what's most important and what was most important for brian when he was assembling this team was the passion behind the project and that we all understood the heart behind it and we're really passionate and driven and you know because if we're not we wouldn't be able to put in you know the 8 to 12 hours a week right now or the 20 hours a week in a couple weeks or next week you know Um, and so I think that was what was most important and I think because of that we're confident that we're going to be able to get this done and do it justice and tell the story that um, we really want to tell. Now The cause is all good and well. Now, there's a pink elephant in the room. You know exactly what I'm going to bring up right now, and that's the cost. It's not cheap nowadays or any days to actually fly out, fly eight individuals out to Mm -hmm. South Korea Mm -hmm. with all the equipment and all that stuff. Good luck with the baggage fees, by the way. I'm serious. That's going to get ugly fast. And come all the way, and you're spending more than a week there, perhaps even two weeks. So the the cost of food and, and and living is is probably in South. I, I I would have no idea. I've never been to that side of the world. But tell me. How much money do you need to raise in what period of time? Um, yeah, so basically we've set a goal for ourselves um, through the website Kickstarter, which is a fundraising website for the arts. Um, and our goal is to reach $20,000 by October 30th, um, which is actually a lot less than what we would really need to make um, to make it exactly how we'd want to make it. But that's, we understand that's that. bare minimum. Yeah, so this, this is a bare minimum um, uh, level we've set for ourselves. But... Um, so basically the way Kickstarter works is uh, you donate through the site and we have to reach $20,000 by October 30th, 30th. And if we don't, if we're $10 short, we don't get any of the money. Um, Which is something I, I still having a hard time understand, <laughs> though, because I guess I guess if you were if, the, if I were to donate and you guys wouldn't reach your goal, then I would get my money back. Yeah, right. OK, yeah. so ladies and gentlemen, don't worry about that. <laughs> see, that's the one thing, because I don't know if I wanted to say that, because if you were to donate the money and you're like, oh, well, they could fail. And then the website, it's a scam. They just take it yeah. all. No, it's not a okay. scam, but no. it's, it's an interesting business model. Yeah. Very interesting business model. Yeah. But uh, so how much money do you have right now? Uh, we're at about 15%. I'd say we have $3,500 around there. So you got about a month to go. Yeah. Magical October, guys. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> well, we're making, we're, planning, we're making a strong push. I think uh, up until now, we've been primarily going to close family, close friends. And um, strictly like Facebook. And, and using, and... yeah, social media. I'm kind of relying on it almost. And um, I think with this meeting on Wednesday, we'll really start a new phase um, in the fundraising effort. And um, I'm confident that we'll be able to get there. Yeah. So last question, what do you actually hope to accomplish with this project? Well, like I said before, um, this is much bigger than just making a, a movie. Um, we really are hoping to, I kind of mentioned this before, but start a foundation, um, raise money for Pastor Lee to right. have a new facility. Um, but we also understand that this is just part of um, our mission to just help other people. So not only do you want to tell this guy's story, you right. want to continue it as well. Right. Oh, yes, definitely.